Nice. What up? Nice. This is the uh, this is the handsome podcast. That's right. Welcome. Welcome, welcome to the good looking uh, section of the pod. Where uh, neither of us are Luke, so we aren't uh, we aren't as versed in the welcome to yeah, another yeah, episode. Yeah. Of we, don't have, we don't have our own intro pattern yet. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was pulling up these stats that we were uh, just off the pod talking about that we're going to talk about things. I, uh, like, I, d- I looked them up today. I have I have my first uh, audio data dump segment ready to go. Perfect. Um, <laughs> okay, so we it's just Ben and I because we decided this week with two games uh, and we have such a large cast of hosts now. Yeah. Um, we actually can split our time. Yeah, so Ben and I are going to talk about the Tormenta match, and then this, I don't know. This was planned before the Tormenta match. True. Yeah. Yeah. Where like you know, if we'd known how that was going to go, maybe we would have just skipped the whole thing. They're like, oh, let's just talk about the Open Cup. But uh, my point from last week still stands. We still haven't lost to Tormenta. I said I said we'd have a clean sheet. That was my first prediction. There we go. <laughs> We're already two for two. Um, we'll get to that here in a minute. Yeah. Um, so we start if with you were hoping, right? well, uh, first of all, I'm going to say if you're hoping to see Luke, Camille, or likely Riley, you're going to have to wait till after the Open Cup match. Mm. Uh, we're recording Monday night. Mm-hmm. Open Cup matches tomorrow. Um, hopefully, I don't know. Um, I think, I think Camille's out of town. Is, yeah, yeah, Camille's been quick though. She has. So yeah, we I, we have not cleared with her if she's going to do this or yeah. not. So uh, right. we'll see what she does. But yeah, uh, first bit of news: we have another former UNO Maverick joining the team uh does he go by Eddie I don't know I don't know they, they've I've listed him both. as Eddie yeah Eddie Gordon Edward Gordon yeah uh, the man okay. with no name the the man who everybody thinks is a NASCAR driver apparently or some kind of a driver yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know I don't know I don't follow racing enough to know what that means <laughs> I, I think uh, I think the implication was with a name like Ed Gordon it sounds like you should be racing ah, he should be okay <laughs> That helps. Um, so based on what the team released, he uh, played for Creighton Prep. Yep. Was two-time Gatorade Player of the Year. Which... Uh, Nebraska, Nebraska. Nebraska Gatorade yeah. Player of the Year, yeah. For, for soccer, which is still pretty impressive. It is great. Two times. Um, Probably was in for school. Prep. Diego well, Gutierrez was in high school. It counts for something. Yeah. And so he did won one state title and runners up twice, right? Is that I what? I think so. It was something like that. So, I mean, good prep career. Creighton Prep yeah. is a good school. Yeah. Um, especially, I think, with sports, they seem to be fairly good. Football and soccer. I can't comment good. on the academics or the cultural aspect of it, but they do seem <laughs> good at <fair>. sports. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know that you can get academic scholarships, even yeah. if you're yeah, yeah. not academically inclined. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. And then uh, played for UNO. Um, I, they had something else on his UNO career. He he had he had uh, several what I would uh, when I worked for the club would have called notable achievements, but you know yeah, yeah. one fact checkers might have taken exception to. So made, I think there were uh, a few academic all Americans in there. Yeah, so made a summit league tournament team and was and then was on the entire league second team in 2021. So um, yeah, pretty. I mean. You know, coming from you know another local boy, I think that helps a lot. Um, yeah, I think that I think when this team was first announced, and I was talking to people locally, and knowing it was you know third tier soccer, I think a lot of people were anticipating this type of these types of signings. Yeah, um, where absolutely. it was going to be you know Creighton guy, especially once Jay was announced. It's guy, like, a guy who Jay has coached multiple places. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. But it was, I think it was one of those things that we we all hoped that we get to this point, and I think this is just the start. You get guys, you know, some of these former Creighton players have been pros for a while. Um, uh, fa- no one, no one talked about Fabian Herbers in our uh, last thing, but there's a Creighton player we could be seeing tomorrow night. That's true. Yeah. Um, I thought you were going to talk about that kid that just transferred to the Creighton basketball team. And I was like, we don't need to talk about basketball. Then. Wait, so Creighton just got a Creighton. Did they get that kid from uh, Detroit Mercy? Uh, they got the kid from TCU. I don't know. Ah, okay, whatever. Anyway. I don't pay I don't pay close enough attention. Yeah, um, personal news, Ben knows this, but I got accepted into the UNO Master's of Public Administration program. Uh, signed up for classes this past week. Nice. So start in the fall. 
So nice. now, I'm, now I'm Mavs, so I can't care about Creighton's. So. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. You you got to pick a side. Yeah. I well, uh, I picked mine. Yeah. Now, what's weird is uh, everything about my past and uh, like my my upbringing, whatever, like uh, fully would align me with Creighton. Both both <laughs> personal, family, married into, whatever. I've been to a number of uh, yeah yeah anyway. Uh, but like, I can't root for them in soccer. Like every time they play, I end up rooting for the Mavs and like, I'm not, I can't quite figure it out, but like, uh, yeah. I mean, one, I, we're delaying wanting to talk about this match and that's okay. Uh, yeah, it's fine. But I mean, we could be here. Well, I think part of the appeal of UNO is the story behind how they ended up with men's soccer. Yes, absolutely. You know? And then how quickly Jay was able to get them to be a contender and a competitive Team. Yeah. And then the per, a person that takes over for him then is a guy he coached under at one point. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just Sorry. I think that there's a lot of appeal there. Um, okay, I I suppose we should talk about. Well, let's 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 continue the Eddie Gordon theme. Oh yeah, I like this. So, I felt. Like we have a habit of making announcements when we need the players to play immediately. Yeah. I think Jaime Ponce. <laughs> Ponce. Yeah, Ponce, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and so I somebody I wasn't the only person who who thought this, but I, I you know, yeah. when I saw it, I was like, well, we're gonna see him Saturday. We did, yeah. And we did. And you know, others others pointed it out as well. So full credit to those folks. Oh, if we want to delay talking about this match, we did forget one other piece of news. Oh, which is the WWT partnership. Oh yeah, yeah. Local broadcast more because uh, there were a lot of conversations about it, and I was like, I don't know, man. Is it going to so, come out on YouTube TV? <laughs> no. So uh, eleven matches, which started with the one on Saturday. Great. Um, so it's eleven matches. They're being played on uh, Circle, which is a WWT like substation. Yes. Well, yeah. Don't do the. I know. I know. Yeah, be careful with the hands. Shirt for on. WordPress. Shirt for yeah. WordPress. That's right. Um, our website runs on. So I was I was happy about this for a number of reasons. One, uh, that Circle TV is both uh, over the air broadcast and cable. So you That's can great. get it both ways. Uh, two, this means that now two local stations have a buy-in to this team because KTV mm. covers us extensively. Shout out to Matt F. Yeah. Foster? Matt F. Forrester. Matt Foster. Yeah. <laughs> Foster. Uh, dude has been a champion for this team yeah, from, absolutely. from the local news. Um, but now, as I said to my wife, this kind of forces WWT to talk about the team at some point because if they're going to be on one of your substations, you kind of have to do yeah, it. Yeah, you're now invested in promoting this. Yeah. So uh, the only two home games are our first home game and our last home game. The other nine were our away matches. So yeah, that's, um, that sounds great. That sounds fabulous. I'm super excited. To me, to be, and I said this on the Omaha Parliament Discord. I said my excitement about it is, it doesn't matter if you can afford ESPN Plus. It doesn't matter if you can afford cable. If you have an antenna, you can watch this team. Lowers at least the barrier. Times. Lowers the barrier of entry. Yep. Lowers the barrier of entry at bars. Lowers yep. the barrier of barrier of entry everywhere. Really. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, most bars are going to have a, a premium cable package. They're going to have the substation. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's. It's a huge partnership. I think this is the first step of many. Mm. Um, from my understanding, they're using the ESPN Plus feed. So oh, uh, we got to talk about that. That's probably where we should start talking about the match. The ter- yeah. Uh, well, so if we want to segue to the match from that, the terrible feed that we saw on ESPN Plus would still come through if you're watching what a, it. What a great introduction to. Uh... So, I, I got to tell you my first thought of this. I'm watching the game at my sister's house in Cedar Rapids because we went over there for Easter. Yeah. And I'm watching the game, and my first thought was, is their internet this crappy? Because I, I have never I have never watched ESPN Plus at their house before. So I thought, well, maybe it's their terrible internet. Nope. It, then I get on every social media platform, and everybody's like, what's wrong with this feed? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You and, I, you and I texted about this. Yeah because <laughs> um, i was like man this is like really glitching hard here and like i've been having some i've been i can't turn off so i have a samsung smart tv it's been great yeah, yeah. It has a native espn app and i cannot turn off the closed captioning it just turned on a few weeks ago uh, 
and I cannot turn it off. I'm <laughs> like, like looking online, the instructions segment, like the area is not there. <laughs> You're like, just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no way to, no way to actually turn it off that I know of. If you know, please hit me up. Um, and so I'm like, well, maybe it's because I'm running it through my phone. I'm casting it to the TV. Maybe yeah. that's a problem. And then like, yeah. and then the delay, like, you know, you'd see the corner kick and then you'd see it again as they zoomed out. And then you realized at some point, I realized the audio is on the close ahead. camera feed. Uh-huh. Yeah, which was ahead. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. That happened a couple times where uh, a foul happened. Right. And you'd be like, how does he know this? Yeah. Like, and, oh, or, or you could even hear the crowd react to something. <laughs> and then you saw the video part of it. And I, I mean, it was a significant, like more than yeah. five second delay. Yeah, it was no, pretty it was, significant. Uh, um, what a great, what a great welcome to all the people it, who are watching for the first time on WWT. Yeah. I mean, it cut out. It, yeah, it was just, it was odd. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if it was Tormenta setup or what the setup was, but I, I will say that we'll talk about the actual match a little bit, but <laughs> if you wanted to watch this one back, that's another deterrent from wanting bother. to watch it. I wouldn't bother. Um, I, I've been watching more championship matches since, right. uh, you know, most of our last season's team is thriving in that league. Yeah, um, for sure. Uh, and the quality is better. We really, like, I don't understand how the cameras are such consistently low quality are still in circulation, providing <laughs> modern sporting events anywhere. Yeah, I, I don't get it. Yeah. Um, let's go back to talking about Eddie Gordon, though. Yeah, let's do Sorry, I interrupted you. No, 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 no. This has been great. Uh, I thought he was a highlight yeah. in the game. I thought he was great. Do you I can't believe they let him in the match without a name on. Like, what, what, what? Do you think, do you think him having played for Jay helps him jump into the team sooner than maybe if we had signed a different player right away? I bet he's been in camp for months. It could be. That's my guess. Yeah. I mean, but he also knows what Jay expects. So yeah. I wonder how much that helped him with the transition to being able to jump right into. Yeah. No, I, I, you know, I, I don't know. It was an interesting, it's an interesting one. We've talked a bit on this pod about um, certain local players with certain distinctive head shapes who have yeah. um, been in camp for a long time as well. And like, you know, I, who knows, who knows what's going on there. Um, but he stepped right in and looked great. Right? He was a yeah. bright spot in the last half of that match, last third or whatever, whatever long he was in. I thought he was, Really good. And I, yeah, I'm sure playing for Jay for a while has got to be useful. I'm sure he can come in and grasp. And I mean, I, I wasn't expecting him to be signed as a central midfielder. I think no. we were all kind of thinking this is maybe another option at right back, but it may still be, we don't yeah. know. I mean, uh, you know, they, they yeah. again, it's Jay. I think that he only has to put uh, positions on people because he's told to right right um, right he's only <laughs> we only have a formation because he is required by the league to provide ex- one. exactly I, he's not quite uh like total football you know johan cruyff like everybody doesn't have a position because you can play any position on the field but jay comes as close as you can without actually playing total football i think that's a i think that's another good segue do you think jay got the personnel right or uh in the right places for that game so specifically let's talk uh, this lineup yeah so uh our our back line outside of claudio is the same it's three out of the four have been the same ones for for few matches yep i don't think i think claudio looked fine i thought i i i i mean we kept a clean sheet yep you know it's first game all season we haven't didn't live in a goal you got to give him a little bit of credit for that Really hard the time. Say it's Alex Tusha's fault they were going up three goals in the first two games, but right. like credit where credit's due. I think the only thing that maybe a bit that Alex may have done a little bit better job of was that first that the one uh, the one attempt Tormenta had that went off the crossbar mm. and had it been like a quarter of an inch lower probably would have bounced off the crossbar and into the goal or off of Shido's back and into the goal. Oh. And yeah. that was Claudio's side, and he was on the ground trying to stop the ball when it went up and over. So, but I mean, it didn't go in, so yeah. it is what it is. Um, I'm, 
I'm still not convinced. Uh, we were talking about this earlier, but I'm still not convinced our fullback selection is what we think it's going to be. Um, I, my my comparison with Ryan versus Dami is Dami was a defensive player that knew how to play offense. Yeah, although you know he's playing like forward now. He's playing like yeah. winger for. But, <laughs> but Ryan is an offensive player that's never been asked to play much defense, and now he's being yeah. put into defensive position. And I think it shows in his his tendency to get burned a few times. Yeah, because he's when still, he, he's you know he is not. Learning. Yeah, I again they kept a clean sheet, but yep. it's also one of the. It's also. I don't like to say it this way because, as Camille said on Discord, we really at this point in the season shouldn't think of any games as easy games. <laughs> However, we kept a clean sheet against Tormenta. Mm -hmm. Had that been, you know, Greenville, had it been even uh, Fuego, which is coming up this Saturday. Yeah. I, I think that him getting burned like that could – I think it could cost us eventually um, more than we – more than us giving up a penalty that may or may not have been a penalty type of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, exactly, exactly. The, yeah. the, I think the other thing that was noticeable was leaving Dion out uh, for, uh, was it for Geo? Kind of. Kind of, because so, they, they pushed yeah, they Hugo push and, out. Hugo went to the side. Joe yeah. Brito switched sides? No, he stayed right. He okay. He played left. Yeah, yeah. So Hugo played left, and then Gio came in up top with Noe. Right. So, in a sense, that was your replacement. I, I said this also on Discord when we were all kind of lamenting this match. I mm. think that what Joe ended up doing was filling Dion's role, which is Dion kind of is the winger that doesn't always play on the wing. Yeah. Because Ryan covers him. But I think what hurt us is Joe was doing that, but Amir is not the guy that gets up and it has the speed to be able to backtrack. And so on Joe's side, on the right side, there wasn't as much coverage. So when Joe played a lot in the central, there wasn't a lot on that right-hand side of our formation of, of defensive coverage. And I think that Dion had the, has the ability when he's on the left to come into the center because of Ryan's ability to get forward and have the speed to backtrack and, and catch up if he needs to. So I, I think that part of the personnel hurt us. I think if you're going to do that, you flip, you put Joe and Ryan on the same side then. Mm, yeah. And, you know, I, I felt Hugo was a little bit anonymous in this game. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think Gio, the skill that I've seen from Gio that I really like is his ability to run directly at players. Yep. And like what I, I'd like to, I would have liked to have seen those two swapped. Yeah, you know, and I think and Noe and Hugo have had successful partnerships, it's, right? Yeah. Scored two goals in exactly. together up top. Well, and I think Geo doesn't get to play his game up when he's up top, at least the way that we have our forwards play. Yeah, I mean that he's not he's not having them take the ball, you know, as like a false nine and taking the ball up from part of midfield. Jay likes those guys to be up on the edge in the box. You know, he wants crosses to go in. So it's it's hard. Well, and and like, you know, again, the comparisons between 2020, Evan and Ethan floated around those positions for mm -hmm. a long time until we settled on Ethan is a right midfielder and Evan is right. a forward. Right. You know, and then things really came together. Now, I will say, in, in Jay's defense, We've had two road games, and he's come away with a point from each. Right. And you have – how many more games do we have left at this point? 28. Yeah, 28. Well, 29 30. if you count at least one open, more open. Yeah. Game. <laughs> but, I mean, for league matches, when you have 29, 30 matches left and you're, you have two points, I, I posted the table the other day uh, in our little group. Five, and it's points, like, five points off first place already. Right. And and so much, so much has time to play. So – I, I can't fault Jay for trying something, especially knowing that he has three matches in a week. Uh, and, and, get, and two ones, two ones that are bigger than that one. Yeah, for sure. I think that I think sh Tuesday, I think tomorrow is going to be huge. Um, yeah. Going against a team that doesn't have a tendency to score a lot of goals anyway. Um, don't give them up either, but they don't score a ton of goals. Yeah. But yeah. You seven. Can, 
they, yeah. they've, they've scored five and let in two in seven yeah. matches. That was from Rich's now, thing today. That, that WPAHmedia.com. Sure. That game, uh, we'll talk about it a little more later, I think, but yeah. I, that game has the potential to go 120 minutes plus penalties, depending on how it falls. So I think everyone's being very optimistic on that. But, <laughs> but I'll, I'll, lay, I'll lay why on you in a few. <laughs> yeah. um, and then I think that we have to be ready for, for Fuego coming in. They've yeah, told about flashy, the a big deal. Yeah. Well, and they've been flashy in offense. Uh, they have not played on our size of pitch, but that may either be a really good thing for us or it could be a very dangerous thing for us. So, yeah. Um, I, I don't know that the personnel is wrong to answer your question more directly. I don't know the personnel is wrong. I think the positions the personnel were put mm. in didn't, yes. Yes. didn't lend themselves yes. to the right. I totally if, agree. If this game was in July, I would be a little bit more upset with Jay than the second game of the season going on a three game road stretch at this point. Yeah. I mean, let's, um, let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see what happens the next two games before we start. Yeah. You know, uh, how about Kamal Malcolm, huh? <laughs> yeah. We were texting and we were both like, okay. Okay. I get it. I get why yeah. we've been going after this guy for three years now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think. One, his skill alone was impressive, but like just wow! And the guy hacked him to pieces. Like yeah. Nebhard should have been. I said this one as well. Bye-bye. That should have been a red card. The other foul shouldn't have been. But like, I don't know what the ref is doing. Tormenta should have been at ten men for the last twenty minutes of that match. I'm not sure the right guy got the red card, but yeah. Um, sidebar: If we think our refing's bad. I posted a, a video on Twitter, retweeted a video on Twitter of uh, Anthony Martial getting fouled from behind, getting injured, and it was neither a card nor a foul in this in the game. And I was like, "This ref should never have another match." Yeah, I so, was uh, speaking as of, bad as it is for us. I was watching is- NBA basketball yesterday. I was folding laundry, and uh, it was the Celtics game, and like. This guy gets a bloody nose. Um, oh, what's his name? Brown. Okay. Galen Brown gets a bloody nose from a play. And he's like, they have to stop the play. And no foul was called. He's just like down on the floor, four on five, like whatever. So they call time after the play. It's like getting his nose fixed. And the ref is there talking to him. It's like, how in the world do you explain to a guy why his nose getting like yeah. so bloody? The guy and like, you know, two minutes after they stuff his nose, just like blood all over his face. They have to stop play again. And it's like. Yeah, well, I didn't really see that as a foul. I don't, you know, right. like, what do you even say? I guess it was yeah. legal contact with your nose. Your nose shouldn't have been there. Like, <laughs> um, so, you know, refereeing so, is refereeing, right? Like, yeah, it it's whatever. tough. So, I mean, I guess I'm just kind of going through the team's thread. First of all, end game stats. Oh, you want a little data dump? You want a data dump? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what the team put out there and then we can yeah. talk about because I it's really let me tell you. I also don't think the team stats, either the team stats were wrong or the halftime stats were wrong. I don't know which because halftime we stats told, almost always wrong. Yeah, because at, at halftime we we had eight shots, eight shots, mm-hmm. but then the team's final stat said we had eight shots, and I know we had shots after the set after halftime. <laughs> but uh, 50 50 pe- uh, for possession, it looked that way. Yeah, um, I. A friend of mine texts me, uh, who's kind of I mean, more of a casual fan. Actually, I told him about the pod, so shout out Justin Holes. Um, you might know Justin. He was at Welcome Names, one time. Yeah, really familiar. Yeah. So, and Justin's like, I'm watching it on my phone. At <laughs> uh, this- Justin, I'm sorry I never got back to you about DJing your wedding. That was the thing I just did one time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, and he was like, he said, I don't understand why they look so disjointed. And my response was, both teams are low Me possession. <laughs> well, I, my my theory at the time was both teams are low possession teams that like to to attack on the counter, mm. and that tends to make games look like they did in that game. <laughs> right, you it, can't both not possess the ball at the same time. Right, it it reminded me of a couple of our matches against Madison last year, because when Madison was less uh, attack minded than they seem to be this year. Yeah. And where it was just like and to get through a few coaches to get there, but they got, yeah. there. but 
you know, it just looked that way. Uh, neither team had stellar passing stats, but ours were under 60%. Um, and even on fouls, I mean, the, the, I think the concerning stat that we've both talked about through two league matches is the fact that we have been six, like 65% com passing complete. Uh, oh, yeah. Completion. Are you ready for a data dump, Ryan? Let's do it. All right. This is where we would do some like cool graphics and music. Data dump segment. Oh, okay. So this year we are 11th in the league currently with 59% passing accuracy, which is like 10 plus points. No one is in the 60s. The next highest team is 70%. <laughs> it gets worse. So I tracked passing accuracy last year and last year only, to be fair. Yeah. Um, so I didn't do the first year. And, uh, oh, yeah, I stopped at game 24 last year out of, what, 28? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, so of the, of the games I have data for, the only time that we were below or our low for last year when I tracked, and I'd imagine this is our low overall because the last game I tracked is when we lost to Greenville. And we basically never lost again and trounced the living you-know-what out of everybody after that game. Uh, yeah, yeah. So 65.1%. Um, our home draw on 4th of July against Chattanooga. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we haven't cracked 60% this year for passing accuracy. It's so that's very bad. Yeah. Well, and I think two things are playing into this. Uh, one, it was something... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shout this out for Camille since she's not on this podcast and uh, she'll have another game to talk about so she won't get the chance to, to yell about it then. But lucky her. The, the, the tendency in this match for the long ball was especially after the 73rd minute when they went down a man and they never looked like they were actually down a man because we yeah. just kept hoofing the – I mean, it looked like soccer you read about from when the sport was first invented. Like <laughs> – knock the ball down the field and let it roll downhill at St. James Park because they built the stadium on a hill and you knew which way the ball was going to roll type thing. Like, yeah. we, it just it, – we don't have the players up top right now that control the ball well enough to launch the ball that way. We had guys that were dead tired because of multiple reasons. And, and we continued after being up a man to just keep launching the ball forward. And it – one that lowers your passing accuracy because it's a lower percentage pass. Yeah, yeah, you're just basically tossing it but, up in the air. Right, but also it it just it didn't lead. Like I, at some point, you got to change your strategy when it's not leading to anything happening. And I think that was the frustration watching the game was you try it a few times and nothing happens. And we, I mean, in the first half, we had some legitimate chances. Uh, Hugo yeah. had a nice chip shot that he tried in. Uh, JP hit one off the post that looked like almost like Dommy's penalty last year, where he hit the post and just yeah. went across the face of the goal. I mean, we had legitimate chances that weren't going in, and then all of a sudden we just decided it was time for long ball. Uh, yeah. And and their center backs and their defenders are all taller than our offensive players, so we were losing all of those aerial duels at that point too. It just the strategy wasn't making sense for what personnel and who was on the field and who you're playing against. Um, yeah. You know, it just, I, I was shocked. Now, a couple of corrections, just real quick. Yeah. yeah. One, we had almost 62% passing accuracy in Madison. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's Irk Russell Park, not Eric Russell. I think I just saw mm -hmm. Eric Russell because uh, my first job out of college, I worked with a guy named Eric Russell. Anyway, let's resume. I'm 95% sure we all thought it was Eric Russell because uh, we all just saw the imaginary eye after yeah. the ER. We all yeah. see what we want to see. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I guess first half, not that there's a ton to talk about. Uh, we had a couple yellow cards. It is what it is. Um, I think Shido, Shido made team of the week. Uh, he had some really good saves. Yeah, uh, I mean, he, he, was, save. he was – that, that one on the free kick was very impressive. Yep. Yeah, that's what I was just going to bring up. This free kick save. Um, there's a couple open play shots, too, that he – if he wouldn't have had safe hands, we probably mm -hmm. would have been giving up a rebound. And, you know, we've been we've been knocking the team for their long ball strategy, but, like, boy, can he put the ball on. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, my thing is 
from a keeper, I don't mind it because that's kind of their game. I mean, our, one, Shido is not a play the ball of the back keeper. We don't, I mean, he will do it, but if he has a ball and he there, can punch There have been times where it looks like he sure thinks he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's definitely the keeper that if he can, if he has the opportunity to punt the ball, he should be. And Absolutely. Absolutely. This, especially if you got guys like Ricky, Hugo, guys like that running up top that are faster. Kamal. Yeah, Kamal. I mean, if, if he's launching the ball like that, we're going to be okay. Um, but yeah, well-deserved team of the week for Shido. He, this was one of his best matches in quite a while individually. I think last year, a lot of his plaudits came because the defense in front of him. I think Saturday was because he is a great keeper and he showed why why it was important for us to bring him back. Um, yeah, Hugo had the chip shot. Um, Connor keeps thinking he's going to score that 25, 30-yard banger. He tried another one in the first half. Yeah, I mean, you know, we need, we need to do something, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the bright moment of the match was JP's uh, it hit off the bar that nearly went in and off the post. It's, and <sighs> In a game like this, you only have so you, many. Uh, yeah, no, you got it. I mean, but it could have been. It could have been Cheeto's save. I mean, I agree. Yeah. Uh, but they, have, they also have their sponsored safe hands. Ah, uh, good for them out there hustling. Too. Um, I think one thing that is has been common through our first, you know, our one open cup and our two league matches is Joe Bre- uh, Brito's service has been on point. He's uh, he's. He's, uh, you know, trying to keep up our reputation as crossing kings in the league. I mean, but he finds people. Yeah. Uh, he, no, no. He's, he finds JP. His, his service from corners has been really good. I, I've been – I know all of us saw Dion's highlights and knew that that guy could get his head up quick and really fire crosses in. But I think Joe is his equal on the other side for a younger player. He's, yeah. No, I, I, I mean, I good. think – you know, I alluded to this, and I, I think we can. There's there's other times to talk about this, but I think um, I feel like Joe is an example of the type of player I thought we would. You know, last year we might have gotten a couple of Joes, or two years ago right. we might have gotten a couple of Joes, and and now some of those players are probably in MLS next. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I, I think though, I think after a couple of years of MLS next, I think that we're going to see the player pool come back our way. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, I, I think it's like, that's a whole other pod, because I, I think there's like all sorts of interesting things like, you know, do you take it seriously, like Columbus Crew and just buy as many great players from you from the right. other third division league as you can or like, well, know. but then you also wonder how many of these players, you know, if, if Joe went to MLS next first instead of us. Yeah. And then realizes after a couple seasons, I'm not even sniffing MLS. I'm just stuck in this team. Right, right. Those I'm guys playing are going to be ready 25 to games a uh, year on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Like, right. this or is not much different playing... than if I'd just, like, gone and gotten a real job. <laughs> well, and I can go play in front of real crowds. Uh, yeah. Probably better competition. We we joked so. about this with uh, the menace goalkeeper, right? But, like, yeah. part of the fun of that has to be, like, I'm getting heckled, right? Like, I'm here doing yeah. this. This is real, real crowd I want. Yeah. That's part of being professional. Yeah. Um, I so I mean, second half again. There's not a lot to talk about. Yeah, I, think I think we've covered all the highlights. This the one highlight we didn't talk about, which is the weirdest stat we always give Jay a hard time about. But we had subs yeah. in the 65th minute. We had three what, of three, them at once. Three three changes at once in the 65th minute. Which like he was watching, you know, Premier League over the winter or something. Yeah, well, maybe he was. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but that's when we saw uh, Kamal come on for Noe. Yep. Um, Ricky came on for Geo, and then that's when Eddie came on for JP. Yeah. Uh, I I think Jr. kind of alluded to this in his column a little bit uh, that we uh, wghmedia.com subscribe. You'll get those articles. But Jr. kind of alluded to you know maybe this has something to do with what we see in Chicago. I, I think some of it is. I think, yeah, I have a I hard agree. time seeing Jay not start JP. <laughs> um, just, if JP's been, fit, I mean, is he not yeah. the first name on the team list? Maybe, I mean, be. maybe Shido, but yeah, outfield player though, for sure. I yeah, mean, JP's got to be that guy. 
outside of the only other two that I think are guaranteed on on or tomorrow is going to be Dalton and uh, Touche. I think they start in the middle again. But other than that, I mean, and Connor, obviously, he's our captain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, I, I think that subbing JP out was definitely a let's save his legs a little bit. Yeah, this guy came was... off with a knock at the end of the last game. Right, like... exactly. Um, JP, JP spent a lot of time – this would have been a data dump topic previously, but he spent a lot of time way more – like way further into the box playing that mm-hmm. Frank Lampard role, if you will, like very attacking mid. <laughs> Look, I mean, you can come up with a better example of uh, you know midfielder who scores goals than like by all means, please suggest it. I'll start using it. But uh, no, I just like giving you a hard I think time. Eight seasons in a row of twenty goals says it That's all. Fair. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, he was just like in and about the box. Like, yeah. I like that as a strategy. I think that can pay off for us this season. Well, especially with when we had JP on last week, and he's like, you know, I don't really know Kamal in the air, and it's like. Unless you're pulling on corners. I don't think we're going to see Kamal in the air. No. Based on, I mean, again, low quality visuals, but. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think that's his game. So, I mean, to have a midfielder that can get in the box that can be there to get, to get headers. I, I think that you need that. Um, I honestly, I know, I know Kamal came on for Noe. I wouldn't be sad to see Kamal start against Chicago just to have a more experienced striker up top. Yeah. Um, if it was Kamal and Hugo or Kamal and Noe, I think we're okay. I yeah, mean, absolutely. I, I mean, I, I, think I, I think it'll be, I think it'll be interesting. Yeah. What, uh, you got a prediction? Well, first let's talk about that red card happened. Oh yeah. The red. Oh yeah. Yeah. We can wrap this up. The red card happened. I mean, yeah. As discussed, it minute. Seemed, seemed soft. It, on that yeah, one. I, yeah. I mean, again, we all. were texting. In the game, it, that was a total makeup call. I mean, it, I think absolutely. And I don't it, know. Again, I, it's interesting. Like, I said that, and then I was like, "Well, does he think about it a third time?" And then it's like, "Man, I should have sent that guy off." Or I like, does like? I mean, there's no VAR. It's not like they went to the locker room and rewatched it at halftime and was like, "Oh shit!" Like this guy well, just like kicked. I think kicked a man. I think what's what's interesting is. He, I know there were early cards, but the fouls he started calling later in the match, which is kind of the reverse of how you see it, yeah, and it looked softer. Like Kamal's yellow. I was like, how is this a yellow card? Yeah. I know I'm a homer, but I mean, we're saying I don't think it was a red card when it no, was on the, the Nebhard, the Nebhard thing. I saw that and I was like, he's gone. He just yeah. like it wasn't a professional foul, right? Like Kamal's about to no, yeah. burn him, turn him into Cheeto dust. And he, like, instead of just pulling him down, he kicks him, like, yeah. in the upper leg or whatever, right? It, like, yeah, it, yeah. Wasn't, it wasn't a professional foul, and he got booked like it was a professional foul. Right. And then everything else is, like, again, maybe a professional foul, maybe just a foul. And there's cards, and, like, it was – I just think the referee uh, lost the plot, as they say, uh-huh. on I, that I, one. I just felt like Kamal – I'm not a, I'm not against the one on his on the sideline when he got carded being a foul because yeah yeah but for that to be a yellow card I was like the dude's been on for 15 minutes I don't know how this is considered it's not consistent infringement yeah so I, it was just weird but um yeah Alex uh, Alex Bruce came on for Hugo yep. uh, so we saw Alex uh, Bruce again um, but you know I mean. I don't know. Like I said before, I just got frustrated because we went what have been 17 minutes. Yeah, it was 73rd minutes, so at least at yeah. least 20 minutes. And then we had five, five added on. So I mean we're talking 22-ish minutes. That's a that's an episode of network television. Yeah, right exactly. I mean yeah. it's, it's it's 22 minutes uh, up a man where we did not seem to threaten their goal at all. No. Um, now now do you think that lineups ever played together? Even in a scrimmage, it didn't look that way. I mean, again, <laughs> not a lot of evidence that it had. <laughs> yeah, again, the conversations that we were having uh, on Discord and between us and stuff, I think that a lot of people agree with us, or at least a lot of the people in the WGH media empire mm. tend to agree with us. I think that uh, I was just scrolling through some of what we were talking about, but. 
I mean, yeah, I just, I think that we looked, we looked frantic. We looked like we weren't sure what to do, uh, mm-hmm. whether it was the refing, whether it was the, the guys together. We just, we never looked cohesive. Yeah. And I, I think the stats you, you brought up, the ones I, I think that all shows and how the game played out. I mean, when you have 50, what was it? 57%, 56% passing completion. Um, you know, we, we are, are, we, we know that anytime that that possession number is above, you know, 45, we tend to look worse. Um, so 50% possession does not play into our game. Well, I just, they didn't look like they were ready to play a game where the other team was also a counterattacking team, which somewhat worries me about tomorrow. Oh, is this the big segue? Yeah. Not yeah, sure. Not that not that Chicago is a quote unquote counterattacking team, but they are very defensively sound. Um, and that is not just because they have an FC Cologne uh, former defender playing for them and captaining their team. Well, let's like like from our perspective, right? We look at last year, and mm-hmm. now we know not only was that a championship winning side. It's a side where most of the players are now playing in the championship. Oh, for right? sure. Like, like that, we had a that team is is proving what Jay has said that there's not much of a difference talent wise between one and none. championship. None. none. I mean, the only player who seems to be slightly struggling at the higher level is um, Devin. Devin. Yeah. And and I I don't know why I'm not watching those games. He he just doesn't seem to be getting minutes. I, I also don't think Memphis is as good of a team as where the others went but like but yeah evan is contributing for san diego loyal mm-hmm. uh dami and uh Dami started on the weekend and scored in like two minutes two minutes, didn't he? Two minutes. Yeah. yeah he's he's now scored both goals on both his debuts uh so so they're contributing i mean i've been watching a lot of sac sacramento republic they are a super fun team to watch like yeah. they, like everybody start watching them on saturday nights so fun yeah um sure. You know, Phoenix Rising's class program, Greg's consistently in the rotation, scored again. He scored, man, I don't know if you guys had a chance to watch the goal he scored, but like, mwah, so good. Back to front, it was like, it was like a better version of the goal he and Shido scored last year together. Oh, nice. Like, it was like back to front in five seconds. Like, the goalie awesome. made in lights out save, and like, sub 10 seconds later greg's burying the ball in the back of the net side note greg if you're still watching one thanks we still love you we miss you for sure but two you made this big point about how you have like you have you can do more things in front of goal than just like the types of goal we've seen but like i'm ready to see him now because you're still scoring these goals where you get in behind the defense and score goals. <laughs> same I mean, goal. it's, a, it's okay to to have a type of game you yeah play. i mean yeah. guys make my guys have made long careers out of playing that type of role yeah so and um, and when he's not doing well he's like working his ass off out there like he didn't he yeah. didn't get well reviewed by fat bob in the uh game against loyal but like he was running down every i mean he was working working super hard anyway, but, the yeah point of this is we don't know the level of the guys we have right now the best we can tell is we're a we're a somewhere in the third division team and mm-hmm. Chicago is definitely a MLS team and the level between MLS and third division is has grown right yeah. and so I I think I think that well we've talked about a lot that had last year's team had this opportunity we probably oh, felt a lot more confident oh, but man. yeah very I also think that Jay signed guys with the intention of these aren't just one and done, you know, no, no offense to Greg. I understand why he made the choice. He did. He yeah. came to us to yeah. get to the level he's at and I'm happy for him. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but you know, well, Greg was also but, the last piece we needed. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like he was, yep. he was a finishing piece after a building year. Absolutely. And I think, and we're now back, we're back in a building year exactly with, less confidence because we haven't like you know we went to uh salt lake city in february Mm -hmm. 2020 and we did great Mm -hmm. and we went to minnesota and we beat minnesota 
And then we had COVID, which was like a bunch of time, but like we were all so full of like confidence and swagger at that point, like both fan base and team that yep. like, you know, they were, they were ready to go. And like, I, I, I think don't if, know if we're there right now. If this roster had been our initial roster. Yeah. I think we would have had the same level of optimism about where this could go that we did in 2020. But I, I think like, I mean, in get, part because our first two results have been pretty darn close to exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, no well, draw on a score draw. <laughs> well, and not only that, but I think that we now have enough, enough data points to look back at to know what it can look like when it's mm-hmm. really humming, what it looks like with certain types of players in that team. Yeah. And we already are doing the – I mean, I did it in this podcast already. You know, Jay's trying to turn Ryan into Dami, yeah. right? And he's not Dami. Yeah. I, I think that Jay is looking at Hugo like Evan. Right. Well, some or Noah like, like Evan or whatever, yeah. right? Like, yeah. But but I think that – Trying to turn JP scarce into JP scarce. Right. <laughs> I think the difference, though, with this season is no one knew what to expect from us in season one. Mm. And we kind of slid into second place. I mean, we could have easily finished out of the top two that season if some results don't go our way. And I mean, we literally, it came we down. We don't live in that season. world, though. We live yeah. in this one. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and then I think the hard part for a lot of fans is last year we have that recency bias of yeah. last year's team was so yeah. damn good. Yeah. And, like and maybe we didn't even appreciate how good they were. I don't think we appreciated the fact that we got to see Evan Conway become the pro he's probably going to become. Or, or yeah. I mean this, that, or I mean, the other thing with like so many players from that roster and like right. it, who is, you know, I, what I was thinking tonight as I was, uh, putting a child to bed was maybe that guy who was like, we shouldn't have let all of our good players go. Maybe that guy was right after all. <laughs> I mean, the reality is, is yeah, we shouldn't, but we also all, we've talked about this a lot, but we all need to be honest of like where we are in the world of soccer at this well, point. And, and I think, you know, we came off of like such an intense high, like those yeah. playoff games, like, everything came together and like oh man like a hot knife through butter right nine I mean, yeah. nine one against two playoff teams i in our league in, it, i don't i don't th- i mean this is going to sound like hyperbole but i don't think that you're going to see that for a while from a league one standpoint oh no no i don't think that's i think that's true i i think all these things that we've been texting and talking and chatting about yeah. about like is the league diluted like all this stuff is true but yeah but bringing it back to our team, we, we could get there. We don't know, right? Like, you know, in Jay, we trust for sure. Well, and we're trying to make – we're making some, like, very overarching comments off of three games. Very small. Um, yeah. I mean – 59% you know, we, passing accuracy. <laughs> here's the thing about passing accuracy, yeah, though, yeah, too, yeah. is that is something you can improve on. I mean mm. – and you know, you know what? Like, it doesn't – as long as you're scoring goals and winning games, it doesn't really matter. And that's the thing, too, is, like, I've watched the, not Barcelona themselves, but those types of teams yeah, where yeah, all they I do is – I kind of avoid watching Barcelona myself. Yeah. As well. but, but those teams that do nothing but pass and possess yeah. the ball and yeah. pass teams to death, they don't always win those games either. Like, no, I remember – I remember – uh well, we don't need to tell more Chelsea stories, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so I, I yeah. let's yeah. So tomorrow uh, at Soldier Field, seven o'clock. Yeah. Um, you want a pessimistic I, prediction? Yeah, let's go with you first. What are you thinking tomorrow? Worst loss in club history. One. That's a super low bar. Yeah. So more right? than that's like that's loss? like we give up two goals. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say our worst and loss. Score none. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I do think I'm I'm optimistic about being wrong, but I am on a being right for sports hot streak. Because in my cycling fantasy game, I nailed a 65 to one pick this weekend. Nice. So, um, I think you know I I think it. I'll be honest. 
anything short of the worst loss in club history tomorrow night, and I'm going to feel great. As I as I said when we brought this up last week with JP on, um, I think we're kind of in a no lose situation here. Absolutely. Uh, if we lose two or three nil, people are going to go, "Yeah, you're third tier soccer. You lost to an MLS team three nil." Yeah. Okay. And, and we're going to go. It's a new team. They're still learning how to play with each other. Yep. Like you know, give us this shot in two months, and and we could have done better. Right. Um, I think if we lose one nil, uh, even in regular time, yeah, I think that that gives the boys a ton of confidence. Yeah. If we somehow lose one nil after extra or in extra time, like, you know, after the regular time, we go to overtime. I think that gives you even more confidence. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen enough penalties. I know that Luke and those guys that went down to sporting got to see penalties and it didn't sound like it went super well. <laughs> um, but if we somehow make it to penalties and you lose on penalties to an MLS side. But yeah. I mean, that'd be great. And obviously, if we somehow sneak out a win, that's, I mean. Let me give you an optimistic, let me give you an optimistic take now. Now that I've gotten the pessimism out of my system. I like it. This will be the first game that we've played all season where it does not matter that we are the League One champions. Because I, I promise you, Chicago Fire does not give a F that we won a cup last year. <laughs> no, I because they are gonna like they don't have any history with us as a club. They're no, our fans they haven't bothered their fans, our you know, like whatever, right? Like none of that has happened. They're gonna look at our roster and be like, okay, mm -hmm. let's go out there and win. Well, and staying on the optimism train here. Yeah, Evan Conway think... never scored a hat trick against them in what was supposed right. to be the last game at their home stadium. I think. I think that yet. I think that those type that's the reason why upsets tend to happen in these types of cups. You know, that's why you see them in England with the several cup yeah. game things Chelsea, they have. Chelsea made it to the FA Cup final, right? Yesterday. Yeah. Uh they mentioned that that game was the first uh Premier League side they'd played. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, in the semifinals, right? So yeah. so I mean the, the upsets happen because of, of reasons like that. You have a team like Chicago that's like, okay, tier three, we don't have to take them seriously. And our guys can play loose because they know it's really a win-win for them no matter what. Yeah. They get to play against better talent than they probably are going to play for the rest of the season. Good pitch. Yeah. Good pitch. They're, they're playing in a good area. They're getting that big exposure. Um the, if you play loose, sometimes you sneak in a goal. Yeah. Uh, I think well, I, I don't know if I text you this or I put it on Discord, but this is, the, this is the type of game I can see us winning by scoring a goal early and defending our asses yeah. off. Yeah. Well, I, I think going back to that, like, we don't minutes. have a target on our back thing. Right. There's no expectation that we come in there and do anything except let them possess the ball. And, like, in in that regard, for the first time all season – we will be in a position to play our game the way we well, want to play it. Exactly. And we would be able to be comfortable because we're comfortable without the ball. Right. And like, you know what? 65% passing is fine because we're only going to have 120 and, passes. And like, we have, I know they have Shakiri and, you know, different players. Shakiri, Shakiri. But we have, I mean, we have Connor who's played MLS. Yeah. We have Dion who's played professionally in Iceland. Yep. You know, uh, we have Kamal who has played at high level. All over the world. All over. I mean, it, it's not like we're coming in with a bunch of, of college kids that have never played pro before. No. Uh, JP, Just a handful JP of them. <laughs> What's that? Just a handful of them. Yeah. But, but you got, you know, JP and Dalton have both. And Rashid. Played, and Rashid. They played three, four years at this level. Um won championships you know, they've they have yeah. won professional championships amir has a lot of experience i mean he has too <laughs> yeah the the thing that we I, I think the place where i struggle is our offensive side of the ball i i feel like we can trust the defense to a certain level what i worry about is do we have we don't have a guy like greg or evan 
who's going to pop up and just get a but goal. Let's say, but I mean, let's say Kamal's that guy. I mean, like, let's say Kamal is that guy. And like, uh, if Kamal scores a goal against the Chicago Fire, I think it's going to be really hard for anybody to justify him not starting that position the rest of the season. Well, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure he's going to start that position for the rest of the season anyway. Like, I'm. I just, but I, I, I don't like. Well, okay. Even if we lose two to pure, one, pure facts here that I can, I can. I mean, again, facts that people told me, whatever. <laughs> but, but we, the reason we had an international roster spot, an extra one that we purchased from Chattanooga mm-hmm. in 2020, was because Kamal Malcolm was supposed to come here, and then COVID happened. Yeah. And so we liked him enough as Jay liked him enough as a player to invest something in bringing him here. Absolutely. I don't know what's happened since then in terms of us investing in him, but he's, he's not going to sit on the bench. Now we've yet to see well, Johnny Willis. So, and I knows? think, <laughs> and I think last year, had we not had the opportunity to bring Greg in, I think Jay probably would have made that the same move. Like he probably yeah. would have gone for yeah. them all. But when you have the opportunity, especially once Connor came here to recruit Greg over, at that point, yeah, what do you? Oh yeah, you, you bring in, Greg was proven at our level. I mean, it's just what it was. Um, we have a greater need for that to fill that position this season, anyway. So my my understanding is that uh, Chicago have been starting their seventeen year old goalkeeper. Mm. So Chris, Chris Brady? No. Oh, uh, the other one. Gabriel Sloney, or however you say his last name. So, I mean, part of that, too, that helps us is while he's been playing MLS games and he's had that experience, I don't know that the reason why they're keeping clean sheets is because they have a good goalkeeper. Has, he ever, has he ever done it on a Tuesday night against a couple of guys from UNL? I don't know. <laughs> no. Uh-uh. <laughs> nope. Uh, definitely not since he's 17. <laughs> he definitely has not played on a field turf pitch and on a Tuesday night and yeah. the fall. Yeah. I, I just think, I think the Chicago just has really good back forward. They're in front of a, a, a keeper that's young and is learning his craft. And I think that that's, that's going to be the key for us is if we can get clean shots on goal, we just got to hope something goes in. Yeah. No. And I think I, here's I think reality bunker in. And you, those long balls over the top are going to make a difference. Here's the thing, though. You score one goal on Chicago, even if they come back in the second half and throw, like, I don't know. <laughs> three or four. <laughs> three or four on us. But if you lead for 45 to 60 minutes against an MLS team, that legitim- yeah. legitimizes a lot of what we're doing here. I, yeah. And I think that's the stuff we have to look at. I, Of course, I want to see us win. I would be more than over the moon if we – found a way to beat an MLS team. Would you? Okay. Here we go. What ifs? Yeah, yeah, what ifs? Would you rather? Would you rather? Okay, we're, we're going we're gonna to play this two ways. One, you, Ryan LeGrand. Mm-hmm. Would you rather win Tuesday or Saturday this week? <laughs> Tuesday. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm inclined to agree. I, if this question You know I'm bringing being, a lot of people to the game on Saturday. But if that question was being asked at a different point in the season, depending on where we were, that my answer would change. But knowing that Saturday is our third match and there's a lot of time to make up ground, I would prefer that we beat. I think, I think the the positive capital of beating an MLS team for promotion of this team. I mean, we just talked well, about this. The is this broadcast. is the question? Your your you know ownership leadership. Yeah. Whatever, which one do you rather win? I do think I do think the question I do think the one is Saturday because I think it makes I think it's more important to win at home in front of I, people your first time back home since you lifted the cup. And it might be our first rainy game of the season. It might be the first yeah. rainy game ever. So I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Um warm rain at least. The thing is you beat Chicago and t- tomorrow. I keep mm-hmm. wanting to say on Tuesday and this tomorrow, but if if we somehow find a way to beat Chicago. The ESPN Plus broadcast, that is the thing. I mean, that's going to be talked about. Uh, KTV and hopefully now WWT, they can bring that up on the news. The casual 
Omaha does it lead fans. does it lead the world herald page or is it some story about like a third string outside no, left be, tackle no. it'll be it'll be why is jabari butler going to be the outside linebacker after this spring that's what's going to happen but that's a whole different story <laughs> but i i think though you know matt foster getting on ktv at 10 o'clock on a on tuesday night or if it goes to penalties and he has to talk about it on wednesday hmm. that the casual soccer fan that is like oh i am a seattle sounders fan or uh kansas you know sporting kc sporting kansas city colorado fan, whoever it is i only follow my mls and my epl team or whatever wow uh the local team beat an mls team Wow, I've watched Chicago Ooh. this season. They're pretty solid defensively, and they actually scored a goal on them. Yeah. Like, or are they boring like, to watch? <laughs> that, but that's that goes a long way for them, you know. Yeah. Um, and if you cap, I know this was a would you rather, so it was only one or the other. But if we somehow win that and then capitalize that on Saturday, yeah. I mean, we it's shot to the moon at that point. Yeah. I well, mean, let's let's. Uh, you got anything else? If not, that's a great note to end on. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't have much yeah. else either. Um, do we, we can try the one last question since it's just the two of us. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have one last question for you. Do you have one last question for me? You go. Yeah, what's your last question? Who gives a hoot? We, we do. do. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, bye.